In 2015, world leaders pledged to keep the temperature from rising more than 2 degrees. And in 2019, the European Union unveiled its response, the European Green Deal. It commits Europe to carbon neutrality by 2050, but it's not a concrete plan. Instead, it lays out the different pieces of legislation that the EU needs to produce to reach that transition. One of those pieces is about green finance. It's called the Green Finance Taxonomy. It's more than 200 pages long. You don't need to read it. What it says is something about the way the EU operates and how it plans to get money from investors to sustainability-related projects. The document says something about the way the European Union is planning its energy transition and the role fossil fuels will play in it. It raises questions of how green the EU wants to be, but also can afford to be. The main focus of the European Green Deal is to decarbonize the European Union's economy. The question of decarbonization focuses on four aspects, industry, energy, transportation, and agriculture, which are responsible for most of the EU's CO2 emissions. It means producing, powering, moving, and growing the same things as before with less energy and without the CO2 emissions associated with it. But while we think of the sustainability transition in terms of electricity production, fossil fuels are ingrained in every part of the economy, whether it be the cars we drive, heating our homes, shipping, or manufacturing industry building blocks like steel or cement, they're everywhere. In a lot of ways, decarbonizing the economy means electrifying it. It means replacing fossil fuels in every part of the economy. But that's expensive and the European Union needs to spend 2.8 trillion euros up till 2030 to reach its climate goals. But only a fraction of that will come from the EU budget. The rest will come from private investors. Most of that money needs to go to companies for decarbonization. That's where the idea of green finance comes in, to help get money from investors to green projects. When a company wants to invest in a project, like building a wind park, it usually doesn't have the money for it up front. So it goes to financial markets and investors. Companies can either take on debt, called bonds, or sell part of their company, called shares, to investors to finance future activities. But what investors are looking for are two things. A high return on investment, which means they make money, and low risk, which means their investment is safe. Green investments are seen as lower risk because they are future proof. If a coal power plant is built today, the chances are it will be closed before the end of its lifetime, so it doesn't make for a good investment. The problem up until now is that the definition of what a green investment is is still vague, and there have been accusations that green finance is greenwashing, that it was being used to fund projects that aren't actually green. So that's where the green taxonomy comes in. It aims to filter out unsustainable activities and prevent greenwashing. It's currently a list of criteria and of 70 activities that are considered to be green. It tells companies how to manufacture basic building blocks of the economy in a carbon neutral and circular way. It includes renewable energy, but also the manufacturing of industry building blocks like steel or cement. These activities get a green label, which makes them eligible for green finance. It means that they are low risk and attractive investments. So that's it. The green finance taxonomy is just a set of rules for green finance? Yes, that's what it aims to do. But the challenge is that deciding what is green is not only a scientific decision, but also a political one. It means making a trade-off between what is sustainable and what is feasible. It tells us that the green transition that EU ambitions may first start off grey. At the center of this debate is one type of technology, and the question of whether to include them in the taxonomy. They're being called transitional technologies, and they're not exactly green. But they might be a necessary step to make the European Union's climate goals affordable, feasible, and acceptable. A transitional technology is in a sense not entirely green, but greener. And the idea is that they would help speed the EU's transition from the worst fossil fuels, before also being eventually replaced by renewable energy. The main candidate for this status are natural gas, nuclear energy, and carbon capture technology, which involves capturing the CO2 from polluting activities and storing it underground. While activists have labeled this as greenwashing and called it a watering down of the transition, it raises two questions. Why is the European Union considering these technologies 
And if decarbonization means full electrification, why are there fossil fuels being included? Well, this goes down to three elements of the sustainability transition, industry, energy, and transportation. We'll leave out agriculture, which is the focus of another piece of legislation. For these aspects, the idea is to go from a system where fossil fuels are used to one where everything is produced, powered, and moved with renewable energy. But the problem is that a lot of the technologies needed to do this don't exist or don't have the scale to allow a direct switch from one to another. Battery and green hydrogen production, the two technologies essential to full decarbonization and electrification are still in their infancy. So the idea with transitional technologies is to add an extra step to the energy transition. One where fossil fuels are used in a way that will allow them to be replaced by renewable energy later on. For industry, it means using hydrogen from natural gas instead of using natural gas directly as an additional step to manufacture goods. This can eventually be replaced by renewably produced hydrogen in the future. And in transportation, it means using electric cars that are powered by fossil fuel power plants until renewables can replace them. But most of the debate has taken place around the use of natural gas and nuclear for energy production, where the main goal is the phase out of coal. Here, renewables face their biggest challenge. It's called the duck curve. No, not this duck. It's the idea that energy generated by renewable energy doesn't match with when it's used. This line represents when renewable energy is being produced, and this one when it's being used. And as the share of solar energy increases, that mismatch will become worse. To solve this requires building a lot of batteries cheaply, or power plants which unlike renewables can be turned on and off. The easiest solution would be to build nuclear and natural gas power plants to produce electricity and heat when renewables can't. The difference here is that there is no effective way to add an extra step to the transition from transitional technologies to renewables, which could be replaced later on. And for that reason, energy production from natural gas has been dropped from the taxonomy. What's important to note is that this transition with an additional step is only a partial one. It requires the added step of carbon capture to be emissions free. But at the same time, it opens up the door for full electrification when the technologies needed to scale become available. The problem is public opinion related to the very challenges they pose. While natural gas emits less CO2 than coal when burnt, it also emits methane when extracted, which contributes extensively to the greenhouse effects. Nuclear accidents, while rare, can happen, and there is still the problem of what to do with radioactive waste. Carbon capture, despite being labeled as necessary by the International Panel on Climate Change, is mostly an untested technology. This has been made worse by the fact that there has been extensive lobbying by the fossil fuel industry to give natural gas a green label. In 2020, the EU came under fire for allowing BlackRock, a financial firm heavily invested in fossil fuels, to give financial advice about how to set up green finance. The problem is that while these transitional activities are seen as a bridge to a low carbon economy and they would ideally be phased out by 2050, they could create lock-in mechanisms. If gas power plants are endorsed by the green taxonomy and are built, infrastructure will also have to be built to support them. It means building gas terminals and equipping homes to be heated by it, money that could have instead been spent on other aspects of the green transition. And once implemented, it would make it more expensive to switch away from it later on. While the inclusion of these technologies means Europe's transition may start off grey and risks lock-ins, it is likely the only transition countries will be willing to sign up for and able to afford. This was Into Europe. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest updates and analysis on European news.